Okay. Hey, you guys. It's been like forever. I know. Um, well, since uh, September of last year, 2023, and this is February 2024. So, anyways, husband had a knee replacement. I'm old. All right. I had cataracts done. The thing that's great about that, I don't really, I mean, I need reading glasses, so I put these on. But um, what we're going to talk about today, uh, we're going to go real deep into color, and it's going to be sequences. Uh, if you really want to learn color, if you want to know what happens, uh, just let, let, let me share something with you real quick. Yesterday I was in the salon and a client came in that um, said that last time her hair was way too red. And I'm looking at the hair and I'm thinking, mm, there's no way that hair was red. It would have faded to a different tone of color than which you had to be there to see it, you know. But anyways, another stylist was helping this young stylist uh, organize the color. And the one thing that she kept mentioning was, you know, tone of color. Well, that tone of color. We got to get rid of that tone of color. But not once did she tell her the tone of color. If you don't know, again, you've heard me say this statement so many times. If you don't know where you're at, how do you know where you're going? And remember, we don't use the word cancel. We don't use the word neutralize. We use create. Because that's what you're doing. You're creating a result. And when it comes to clients, I mean, they're going to have a whole variable of stuff. I didn't stick around. I was done with my shift, so I didn't get to stick around to see the results of what she did or, you know, of what happened with the color or whatever. I'll, I'll find out when I go back. I've got a couple days off, so I'll, I'll talk to her and stuff. Pretty sweet little girl. But sometimes you've got to share where are you and why. So those of you students that are in school, uh, ask your teacher, why did we make that choice? How did we make that choice? It's okay, you're paying to go to that school. It's okay for you to ask that. They've got to do their job. And sometimes, I mean, that's some of the problems that I ran into when I was teaching, was I would have my students ask why. Why did they do that? How did they make that decision? So it forces that teacher to teach, but also it forces people to, where are you at? Where are you going? So one thing we're going to do, I have the product, I have the client. We're going to cover this in just a minute. But I want you to consider, and if some of you are students and you've already got this mannequin, nine times out of ten, what your teacher's going to have you do is do one thing on this part of it, one thing on this part of it, one thing here and one thing there. We're not going to do that. We're going to take all these colors and turn them into one color. This mannequin will be equally uniform throughout, no matter what. What I'm going to let you do, and I'm going to talk about it when we decipher color, I will tell you that if you want me to do a dark, boom, one application, it'll all be done, it'll work, it'll do it fine. You want to make my life easy, fine. I want you to make my life difficult. If you want it to be all platinum, I've got to fry that hair to get it there. Because with product, that's 12 levels of lift. With client, that's all she's got. One level of deposit. One level of strength. So, I mean, if that's what you want, I'll do it. But let's get real about this. Let's learn color. So what I may do is, if you guys wanted to go to platinum, after we're done with everything, we will because taking artificial color to that is extremely difficult to get the uniform tone throughout, but we can, but the hair's gonna be fried. Remember, hair on a mannequin is already chemically treated. It already has stuff in it. So whether this is called a Tammy mannequin, and in a couple of schools that I worked in, that's exactly what we did. We took this mannequin and made it all one color, but the entire time, the students were able to decipher and totally understand what tone of color was and what tone and color they needed to change. They understood resistance, they understood strengths. So, and they then of course, again, artificial product, artificial color, it's still not natural color that we're putting on, it's artificial. So we're putting it on natural hair. 
So anyways, that's what I'm going to have you guys do. I will say that the hardest part would be the six and seven area, to, but to make it instead of red or red gold, keep it in that brown level. Like a seven is pretty goldy. That's what you call a ginger, okay, a ginger hair color. And um, pretty much, you know, can we take that to brown? Yes, we can. It's, it's simple, but can we make the other ones match to go to brown, especially once we lift here? We have no idea what's underneath it, what they used to create this. We have no idea what they used to create this. You know what's fascinating to me? I don't know whether you can tell on, on, on screen or not, but this is supposed to be salt and pepper. But it was taken to platinum, and there's some beige toes in there. And in a few minutes, you're going to understand why that went beige. Once we go over the color, what happens when you combine color? And some of you are going to say, well, heck, all I have to do is go to the color wheel for that. Why isn't it in your brain? Why do you have to go to the color wheel? I mean, I think it's cool that you go to the color wheel, but when is it going to penetrate what's going on? I'm not trying to put you down or anything, but no color. That's where the money's at, you guys. That's where we as professionals come a, uh, you know, just a notch above the rest when you know color. And so often clients will come in and, you know, I'm, uh, they'll uh, say, well, you know, go look at the notes and see what they used last. Well, I can look at that color and I know what they used before that, especially once you understand how color fades, what happens with that. And the thing about color as well that we are going to cover, get this mannequin's face, when you're dealing with the, with the client, the skin color and the eye color are hidden pigment that have created the color on top of their head. So look at this mannequin, the Tammy mannequin. Oh, by the way, this was like about, I want to say it was about 50 bucks for this. So if you want to order one, if you, you know, and then uh, you can, we can go along with this together. You can use your product or whatever, and we can talk about it as you do it but always let me know what section you're on. So the yellow section is gonna be recognized as section one. The, the red gold or coppery section is gonna be recognized as section two. Section three is the white. Section four is the black. So this is supposed to be white, you know, pretty much, but it's a little beigey in there. And you'll see it when you get your mannequin if you order it. But at least we know where you're at when you, if you send me a note and say, why did I get this result? then maybe we'll talk about what do you need to use and I'm going to send you formulas. And formulas are extreme. Once you get used to doing the formulas, after a while they just click right in your head. You know them. Uh, before we move on, you guys, I haven't forgotten, please don't forget my book. Um, you know, order it. It's, it's a pretty good book. I've gotten really good um, reviews on it and stuff. It's still four star. On the very last chapter, everything that you're learning here. And it goes one step further into a certain belief I have, but, um, you know, when you know color, you know color. All right, so let's get started. So, uh, you know, right now, we've seen the Tammy mannequin. Uh, let me show you one more thing, one more thing that I wanted to show you before. Okay, you see Tammy's skin color. She's like about, almost like a beigey, but she's in the warm tones, definitely. A little bit of a, of a beigey brown, but a little bit of goldish tone. Now, look at this mannequin, Miss Peach Face. Okay, so uh, I'm definitely clear. And now she's got brown eyes. What does that tell us? It tells us, now this was a real person, even though her skin is clear, if she's got brown eyes, that's hidden pigment. That's pigment that says her hair is stronger than what it looks like. So start noticing these things. Freckles. Freckles are an extreme as far as resistance. If they have freckles, good God, you're going to have a heck of a time pulling that color up to get what you want. You know, and I never recommend using higher volume developers and destroying the hair. Sometimes it's best to um, take it a step at a time and, and advise a client about it. If they know that you care about their hair, they're going to the trust the faith in you is going to increase and then definitely what recommendations because you know what you're doing all right so uh, I wanted to show you that but let's cover this a little bit so I always recommend to my students to go to any of the hardware stores 
and uh, pretend, is that being deceitful? Pretend that you're going to paint a room. Well, do you see all the colors? And I hope that you can see the tone of color because we've got very pale yellow into a little warmer, into a little warmer. These look almost identical, but if you hold them real close, they're not. I thought they were at first too, and I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, and even looking at them from here, but yet I know that this has got just a little bit more pigment, it increases, so from yellow to red to blue. That's how it is, it is not red, yellow, and blue. That's the first lie about color. So when you're talking product, the 12 levels of lift, that's what they're saying that the product can do. Remember, keep this in your mind when you're talking product. All of them are going to say two words that say, and is a strong indication that it may not do what it's saying that it does, because it says up to. So if you're here, and it says up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels of lift, does it guarantee it? No. It depends on what you've got. This is the client, all right? If she's got eight levels of deposit, that's already strength in there. That's already more strength than what, you know, and especially if it's artificial color. So if you don't know what tones out, and then again, what are we totally dependent on? We're dependent on our product. So it's what's your product. That's why you've got to know your product. Listen to the educators. Give them those questions as to, okay, what if I am at a level 10 and I still see some warmth in there? What does the word warmth mean? It means gold, gold, or red gold. That's what warmth means. And if you got real warmth, it's red. It doesn't start cooling down till it's red brown. So all of those areas, know the formulas that create it. So white, for instance, is yellow, red, and blue in the lightest form. Yellow, primary yellow. Light yellow is primary yellow, but in the lighter form. Yellow itself, true yellow. Yellow gold, that's the first area of tone yellow gold. We have a yellow that has become stronger and warmer. That is tone of color. All right? Then we're into gold. That yellow now has been consumed by red to increase into red gold. So it gets stronger. What makes it stronger? Pigment. They have added more red into that. This is product, now you can see it here. We went from orange to red to more red, and then finally red-brown, a violet red. So, even though we see red and green right here, yellow and blue make green, see, you've gotta know what makes it. You've gotta know what puts it together. So I'm gonna cover that with you in a little bit. But right now, I'm just kind of reviewing a bit, but I want you guys to write this down. If you wanna learn color, write it down, because we are gonna take the little Tammy mannequin on our next series and we're going to start working but I need to know which color do you guys want on that mannequin. You want to make it easy for me, level five or lower, one, one step we're done. Uh, I'm not going to do that, we may finish it with that. But I'm encouraging you guys to be right here. These are the harder ones. This a little destructive to the hair to get it there. And that's already uh, chemically treated but it will give you a lot of information. And as we do each one, I'm gonna to talk to you about the tonal values that we have. And then when you have your mannequin and you do it, talk to me about the tonal values. Let's make this a very real class. All right, a good educational class for you to get more information. Um, so that's your product. So let's talk a little bit more here. I'm gonna turn around this way about the client. So if your client has been taken to white, where it looks white or gray, they have taken the life out of that hair. Now, depending on the product that they used, if they lifted it up to what would be called a nine, we've still got some what? A little bit of red in there. Let's go over the personal character of color. Yellow. Yellow will grab 
but it will let go. How do we know that? Because everybody that has green, purple, or like they went in with a bright pink, now it's a light pink, or they went in with just red pigment, a bright red, like apple red or something, and now it's pink red. Because they took it up to yellow, they put that artificial pigment in there, and it lets go. That's a personal character of yellow. You take it up to that, you've also taken the resistance out. There's no strength in that. So the client then, you know, of course, you know, sell a professional product if that's what they want because they're going to need it. Uh, protein treatments, all of that. So red, yellow grows up to become stronger. Yellow grows up to become red. Red cannot be red without yellow. Red is yellow. I've covered this class before, so look at my other hair color classes. And I've, this time we're really going to go in deep, though. We're not going to mess around with it. So red grows up to become stronger. The personality character of red states that it will grab and hold on. That's why you don't want to spill even red Kool-Aid on a white carpet because it is stained. You're, it, it doesn't matter what you do, it's not going to come out. They've got all these products that say it will, but every once in a while you'll still see that hue in there because red holds on. So what we've got to know is how can we keep strength in there in other words, take it to that yellow gold or that level nine because we only have four levels of strength now left. Do you really want to take it where it's going to let go? Or do you want to have some strength in there? That's why you've got to know what makes gold. What is gold? Orange. How many tones of orange? Good God. Go to the hardware store. You'll see a multitude of them. What's really weird is when you really get down to black and blue black, there's only a few. When you get up to white, there's only a few. It's that area in between, and the one that's most common is going to be right here. It's, it's fascinating to me. Every time I go, I just get fascinated with it. But So red grows up to become stronger. Red grows up to become blue. Blue cannot be blue. Oh, by the way, when red fades, it'll fade to pink. But when you combine red and yellow, what do you get? How many of you know? Orange. If you don't know that, you should know it. You're going to get orange. So... Orange again is what? Warmth. Orange is gold. There's different tones of orange, a multitude of them. Red grows up to become stronger. Red grows up to become blue. Blue cannot be blue without red and yellow. Blue is red and yellow. Have you ever seen a blue tarp fade? Red and blue make violet. It'll fade to violet. Might fade to white, which is a color before yellow, and we've talked about that. What's the color of a wedding dress? You put it up in the closet, airtight bag, dark closet, take it out five years later, it's done what? It's yellowed. And people say it was from the atmosphere or whatever. Doesn't matter where it's from, it's yellowed. It has increased in color pigment being up in, in the attic. It's not as white as it was when you first bought it. So if, it, if blue didn't come from the rest of them, then why does it turn violet? You guys answer that. Why does it turn white? Another color that it may turn to is gray. Now gray is created by combining yellow, red, and blue in unequal amounts. You have to know how to make gray. That's why so often gray is difficult to make when the client wants gray here, they're gonna leave with it. But what happens? They come back because you've told them to use the purple shampoo because why? They start turning yellow. Yellow and violet make white, brown, gray, and black, depending on the strength of those colors. This is the knowledge that I want you to get because this is the knowledge that's gonna take this mannequin and make it right. Make it do what you need it to do for successful results, all right? So we're gonna come up with a color. I'll try and do you know what you guys want, what you wanna see, and how did we get there to do it? Uh, like I said, I've done it with my students in the past. It's all going to be the same color when we're finished. It's not going to be all these different colors. And I'll even be filming outside in natural sunlight to show you. Because that's what you've got to do with your mannequin and your clients as well. Take them out to natural sunlight because those uh, lights in the salon are like a blue light and they're gonna conceal some stuff. And then when they get out on the road or somebody sees their hair, 
they might see tones that they don't want. So take them outside to see it so that they get exactly what they want. Now, because blue, the personality character of blue is that it guards and protects. In other words, it gives it strength. Black has the most blue in it. The darker the hair, the more blue pigment. So blue has the three primaries in it. So think about how much in the blue, black, blue, black, blue, red, and yellow make black. How much blue is in that? That's quite a bit. Is there, in this blue right here, is there red and yellow? Yes, there is. You just have to know that. You don't have to write it down because blue has its own identity. But the thing is, is yes, it can't be blue without red and yellow. That's how it was created. So when we have blue and we add more pigment, do you see where red and yellow then increases that pigment? It's easy little fine details that when you do color or when you have a client that comes in and says, oh, it's too light. Well, the word light means something to her. Oh, it's too dark. Oh, it's too red. You're going to get that. What does she see? And what do you need to do to take her where she needs to be? So just real quick right now, cameraman, how much time do I have? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay, so in seven minutes, I'm going to cover, I think, if I can keep from knocking this thing over, color. I'm going to write it down. We're going to go over it again. But I want you to know. I've got the color wheel too here. See, I know the color wheel, but I'm going to show you something. It's going to make it a lot easier for you. Okay, again, the primary colors. Some of you already know this. Are yellow in this order. Red and blue. All right? These colors will increase in pigment. Yellow will increase to orange. Yellow and blue will increase to green. Blue, sorry. Yeah, blue and red. There we go, yeah. Will increase to violet. In other words, more color is in there. This is yellow plus red. This is yellow plus blue. This is red plus blue. They look like math formulas. It's not math, it's just yellow, red, and blue. How do they increase in pigment now? What do we need to do? Okay, so we've already got yellow and red in there. What's missing? What is it? I'm sorry, not what's missing. In order to increase this pigment, we increase it by one of these two colors. So if we red, add red to it, it becomes red-orange. If we add more yellow to it, it becomes yellow-orange. There's your third level color. It's increased again in pigment. If we want to increase the green, we're going to add either more yellow or more blue, green. And it doesn't matter how you write it, it's, it's the formula. And violet, red and blue. Red, violet, or blue, violet. It's the same thing. It's just increased in tone and looks a little bit different, possibly. So, you knowing this, now, how do we make color? How do we make brown, beige, black, gray? white. Why do we lift everybody up to yellow? Big yellow there. And they want to be platinum or they want to be gray. What do we add? Plus violet. See, we could just say, well, add, add an ash. Well, there's three shades of ash. Ash equals blue. Violet or green. So what shade of ash would we add to that yellow? If we add a green ash, 
what's going to happen? We may end up with yellow green hair. So know your product and what that A stands for. How do you determine what that A stands for? Get a white piece of paper. Just smear a little bit of that color. Don't put any developer in it. Just the color itself on that white piece of paper. Let it oxidize and you're going to see the tonal value and you'll know whether that's a green A because a lot of the A's, a lot of people don't realize that violet is an ash. It is a neutral. It is meant to cover gray because what? It's got that personal character of red says it grabs and holds on. All right, those, all, the, all those little factors for you to know about color. All right, so if um, we want shades of, of brown, again, that's, isn't that platinum, white? But if it's a little bit darker, in other words, in the five or six level, it's gonna be brown. If that same formula, as you saw the formula for black, if it's got that much pigment strength, it's going to be black, but it's still the three primary colors. Does not change, does not move. But know what creates them. All right, so I'll wait to hear from you. Possibly do this next week, we'll get together, and I'll tell you what formulas we're gonna use. I'll tell you what, how we're gonna do it, which color, and I'll even give you the color line I'm using, doesn't matter. Because uh, I've got like a whole bunch of different ones. It just depends on what I need. They're all slightly different on what they do. So we know that if we go to a level six, this will be easy. This is going to require a little bit of work. This is going to require a uh, couple applications. This is going to require lifting and then applying, right? See you next week. Take care.